Last week on Sailing Ruby Rose, we explored the beautiful and very historic city of Cardiz in Andalusia. We watched some beautiful flamenco dancing and I also managed to spill wine all over my shorts. Hello from a very windy Cadiz. Uh, today it is blowing about 25 knots, so I reckon it's gusting higher than that um, due to the Levante that's coming through. And we are stuck here in Cadiz for at least another probably 10 days. Um, so what we've decided to do is take advantage of this time and uh, go to Seville. So we're really excited to show you guys. Um, that will be this week's episode by the way. So if you're here just for sailing and boaty stuff, then you're probably not gonna get much of that this week. Uh, just come back next week. Hopefully we won't be sailing Cadiz anymore. <laughs> Hopefully we'll actually be sailing. That'd be nice. Well here we are. It's super, super humid. Yeah, it's humid. We've just walked 20 minutes to Cadiz railway station to get our train. And we're off to Sevilla for a couple of days. Yes, we've got our tickets. To show you all amazing Seville. The Levante that is keeping us port bound in Hadiz mm -hmm. means that we get to explore beautiful and wonderful Seville. Yes. We've been here before so we know what to expect. What I would say to you about Seville is it is stunningly beautiful. It is just full of historic architecture. This magnificent cathedral is probably the centerpiece of the entire city. And it's just a really nice place to be. One small thing, it is what, 7.30 p.m.? Yeah. It is 37 degrees <laughs> Celsius at 7 p.m. It's pretty warm. Which is about... Pretty warm. I don't know, it's 100 and something. Um, 37, no, 37, anyway. Whatever. Anyways, no matter where you go in the world, there's always someone playing Johnny Cash, which I <laughs> think is an amazing thing. So yeah, there's a slide guitar playing Johnny Cash, uh, street artists, and uh, a lot of people really trying to keep cool. Yeah, including us. Including us. But so we are going to do, there's only two real ways to keep cool here, both of which I don't really mind. First is, uh, sorry, there's some, some crazy mime artist who thinks <laughs> he's, he's, a parrot. he's a parrot. Uh, I just thought it was a parrot. It's not a parrot, it's just a man that thinks he's a parrot. Right. This man. Him. Anyways, you're not lost, are you? I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit lost. This is a clever thing, now look at this. So yeah, to keep cool, you either go and stick your head in the fountain, which is fine, and I may do that later. Or, the second thing, you just fill yourself full of ice cold beer. Hmm, which to do, darling? Yes, well, beer is definitely which to do? a priority right just now. Just a top tip, actually, for anyone traveling in Europe. Um, and we've traveled in Europe a lot, right? 
If you want to eat or drink anywhere, if you eat or drink within 300 meters of a cathedral, you are getting ripped off. The prices will double. Yes, which is why we're walking away right now. Yes. Unfortunately, to find some we have no shack. idea where we're going. Are you lost? Seriously? I'm lost. I have oh. no idea where we're going. Hang on a second. So it's bleeding. It's so hot, isn't it? Yeah. It's like crazy. Hot. Luckily, we've ordered two beers already. <laughs> and you ordered the water, didn't you? I ordered the water and a beer. And they've got these kind of jets, these misters up in the ceiling that kind of mist you every now and then. I feel like a, a fern. <laughs> <laughs> A fern, yeah. Look at my fronds, aren't they? Uh, this is the important part of the evening. Si! Gracias. Perfecto. No, nada. Cheers, Mikey. Mami! It's so good. <laughs> I need water and I need to hydrate myself. It's good morning. Day day one in Seville, evening one. Anyway, uh, we have decided to get up and go out ridiculously early. When I say ridiculously early, it's 10 a.m. <laughs> um, but before the sun gets too high in the sky. Anyway, we're going to go and take a quick tour of this amazing city. Um, it is. Just a little bit of a uh, little bit of a fact check for you. Apparently, Seville is the largest city in Andalusia, which is a region in southern Spain. It was founded by the Romans, taken over by the Moors, and then handed over to the Spanish. <laughs> so there you go. That's what was we're competing. Handed over or what? Well, there's probably a series of wars yes. that are quite bloody and involved a lot of <laughs> fanning around and sticks and stuff. <laughs> Anyway, that's what Wikipedia told me. The last bit was my own embellishment. Anyways, that's this morning. We are going to go and see a little bit of Seville. And when you people come to Spain in your boats or your planes on your cars, and mostly boats because it's a sailing channel after all. Even if we're not doing much sailing right at this very moment. Too windy to sail, sorry. Yes. Anyway, um, I have urged you to come and take trips inland and see these beautiful cities because yeah. they are well worth it. Very, very cheap. Um, and uh, yeah, a different aspect of life in Europe. Seville sits 60 miles up the river Guadalquivir and is the capital of the Spanish region of Andalusia. Like many European cities, it has a long and checkered history dating back to the antiquity. Legend has it that it was actually founded by Hercules. It was occupied by the Romans, the Germanic Visigoths and then fell to the Muslims who occupied it for 800 years during which time Seville enjoyed great prosperity as the capital of a number of Moorish dynasties before Spanish Christians overtook it in the mid-13th century after which the local economy fell into ruin. The discovery of the Americas brought new prosperity to Seville in the 16th century as it became a dominant city in world commerce and consequently became the richest and most populous city in all of Spain. This came to an end, however, when a plague killed half the city in 1649, and the river began to silt up and become less navigable to the big ships of the day. Cardiz took over as a main commercial port in Spain. Today, Seville is famous for flamenco, its architecture, its culinary scene, and Seville oranges. In fact, Lonely Planet rated Seville as the number one place to go to in 2018, which, frankly, I totally agree with. My dear friend, you know I give in Been waiting so long to feel it All of these years, I've been listening All you want so know, do you still pretend? We felt the sunshine, we found the gold We thought we'd be forever young, but now I know we can't keep floating, we have to fall This is the beat of broken hearts, is it our last? We can't go on Warm, isn't it? Warm. Warm. 
it's a wall. That's okay. We're used to it. No, it's beautiful. I mean, it is warm, but that's it's fine. Rather than too warm than too cold. Exactly. So I just ordered a large bottle of water in Spanish, which I see whether we get a large bottle of water or not. What will turn up is two Cornish pasties and a half a leg of goat. <laughs> How did you order this beautiful Persian rug? <laughs> That's how you learn. So, can you explain to me where we are? <laughs> Do you have any idea? According to Google Maps, we're in uh, Seville. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally lost. I don't know what I we did what before Google Maps, to be honest. How did people find their way around? Well, actually, for the last three years, I've been depending on you to get us I know, I've been rubbish been this. Rubbish. Yeah. I don't know, I've lost my touch. Hello, well listen, so it's our last night in Seville. We love Seville. It's an amazing, beautiful, vibrant and historic city. <laughs> However, it's like 20 past seven at night. And if you look up at the thermometer on the chemist wall, it is 36 degrees Celsius. And it's cooler, substantially cooler than it was at lunchtime. So the heat is a bit of a thing, but stop bitching, I could be in the Arctic. <laughs> anyway, let's go and get some beer and something to eat. I actually wouldn't mind going to the Arctic. I actually brought us to a slightly more expensive restaurant than I had intended. Why would you do such a thing? I don't know. It was a it was a stress decision. I quickly looked on TripAdvisor and I didn't have time to do my full amount of research, which I normally do. So this is a small digression here. Like when I was a kid, I used to watch The Waltons. Um, two things. The theme tune to the Waltons still makes me cry. I don't know why, it just does. Anyways, the reason I'm coming up with this completely like, tangential story is that at the end of every Waltons episode, they all say goodnight to each other, and it was like, almost the closing, it's the closing of every Waltons episode where someone says goodnight John, and then someone says goodnight John boy, and then someone, anyway. It seems to me that most of our episodes, in fact, end with food. So we are finishing this episode, we will finish this particular episode in Seville with us eating. So, uh, good night John Boy. Good night John Boy. Was it good John Boy Mary Lou? Are you... I've literally no idea what you're 70s about. American culture, which I, pop culture, which I just grew up on. I did Please not. never play me the Walton's theme tune if ever you see me. It's... I grew up in Australian 80s pop culture. Neighbours and... And the Rugrats. Institutional racism. <laughs> and... In all fairness, the right. Ooh. After you, my love. It's so good. That's like butter in my mouth. Mm. Explain to everyone how you forgot to film because you were eating too much food. So we ordered tapas. We ordered four tapas dishes and a dessert. The first tapas dish was amazing, we didn't film it. The second one we no, thought... we did film it, was Yeah. The second one we filmed it a bit. Yeah. It was amazing. And then the third and the fourth were so good, we're like, uh -huh. <laughs> And then this dessert, yeah, there's this, 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 this. So good. So good. Sometimes we're having too much fun to film. Sometimes we are just having too much fun to film. Join us next week as we get a weather window to sail from Cardiff to Gibraltar. We transit the Gibraltar Strait and have one of those wow moments as we have Africa on one side and Europe on the other. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you like what we do and you want to see what we do every week, then please hit that subscribe button. There we go. Cheers, bye. Also, a big thanks to our patron Elle for sending us this photo of her rocking one of our Ruby Rose shirts. Links to both our Patreon page and our merchandise store can be found in the description below.